Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Julia and I am a second year medical student. So you're catching us at part two of a three part series of videos where I'm detailing my MCAT experience. Woo, it's been a ride. So if you did not catch part one, be sure to check that out. It's really important to get us started and really show you where it all began my first time taking the MCAT and how it was a disaster. But with every failure comes a learning experience and best believe my failure at the MCAT was a huge learning experience for me. So in this video, part two, I'm gonna talk about my second time taking the MCAT, what I did differently and how it turned out. So as you can recall in my first video where I detailed my first experience with the MCAT, I showed you the score that I received which was a 15th percentile score. If you don't know, that is not a score that's acceptable or would get me into medical school. So I had to regroup and come up with a plan B. While it was devastating to fail, I was always committed to my goal of becoming a doctor. So I had to make it happen by any means necessary. So therefore, it was time to refocus, re-strategize, and figure out another path to the goal. So what did I do the second time? So first and foremost, as I briefly explained in the first part, I took gap years. So I'm going to dedicate a whole video to gap years and whether or not you should take them, what you should do during that time, and all of those details. But for right now, for right here, I'm just going to explain that I took gap years because of my MCAT. If I did well on my first time, I probably would have never taken gap years and would have just went right to medical school. However, that's not the way the cookie crumbled, and, and I decided to take gap years in order to better prepare myself for taking the MCAT the second time and for applying for medical school. So in my gap years, I decided to go off and get my Master of Public Health degree, my MPH. So getting my MPH was good for a variety of reasons, but first and foremost, it gave me more time. I needed more time to really figure out what I was going to do with this MCAT thing, better prepare, take it again, and all of that jazz. So I needed the extra two years for a time. Granted, there are master's programs these days that are one year or accelerated 13 months. Definitely look into those because I did not need the full two years for my master's degree. But at that time, many years ago, it was the only option for the program that I applied to. But if you can finish it in a quicker amount of time and spending less money, do it. So during my graduate program, I studied epidemiology and global health. It was a two-year program. However, during my last semester, my last spring semester as a graduate student, I was already done with all of my prerequisites, all of my classes, and it was a time that was dedicated just to writing our thesis. Fortunately for me, my thesis was already done because I had done a summer internship in which I published a paper, a research article, and it was able to count twice and basically kill two birds with one stone and count not only as my internship project, but also as my thesis. So for that last semester in grad school, I didn't really have anything to do because everything was done. So I solely committed that time to the MCAT. So that was about a dedicated five to six months where I was exclusively studying for the MCAT. No classes, no work, no thesis, solely the MCAT. While I know that this may not be possible for a lot of you because you have jobs or you're in classes, the goal should be to treat the MCAT as a full-time job. So whether that means you have two full-time jobs and you manage both or you cut some of your commitments out to make more time for the MCAT, you have to do what you have to do. So I started seriously studying in about January, mid-January after the holidays and everything. And my test date was for mid-June. So that left me about five, almost six months of full-time study time to prepare for this MCAT. And I was going to hit it full force. I didn't have time to play around. I knew that I needed to nail it this time because the first time was a failure and I can't keep doing this. It's too expensive. So I was going to go balls to the wall, full force ahead to try to nail this. So first and foremost, I took my gap years. Then I dedicated the six months 
during my last semester of graduate school. So the third thing that I did differently was that I completely changed my study plan and strategy. I should say that I actually made a study plan and followed it because the first time, as you may have heard, I really didn't do much of anything to prepare. So this time I actually made an intense, very detailed study plan and followed it. If there is anything that you should take away from this video, it is the following points which are detailing my study plan. So there were three key things that I did in my study plan. First, I took a Princeton review course. So as I detailed in part one, I did enroll for a Kaplan course my first time around. I didn't really go, I didn't take it serious. However, this time around, I took the Princeton review course, not because I necessarily learned best in the classroom setting. However, I did find the books very helpful, so I wanted to get the books. And honestly, I just was committed to learning more strategies about the test and how to take the test, these test taking tips. Like I said in part one, there's tricks to the trade and the course, the Princeton Review course definitely helped me learn some of those tricks. You don't necessarily have to take a course to get that if you're somebody who already is a very good test taker, but me coming off of my failure the first time around, I wasn't taking any chances. I needed all the help I could get, so I took the course. I'll put up what I took. I'm not sure if it still exists in the same format that I took it, but it was um, a very condensed course. It was in person. It was a few thousand dollars. It was on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, and it was like a few months long, but I enjoyed it. I got something out of it. I got a few little nuggets of information out of it. I do think these days that there are a lot of resources online for students. So if financially it's not feasible for you or you believe that you'll be fine without taking a review course, whether that's Kaplan or Princeton Review or any course, definitely don't force yourself to take one. So second key thing that I included in my study strategy, I used Khan Academy. Woo, Khan Academy. Thank you to Khan Academy for the lives that you have saved, for the grades that you have boosted, for the MCAT that you succeeded. I would not be anywhere without Khan Academy. So when I was preparing to make my study strategy, I was reading Reddit and all these blog posts about things that people do that they were successful and Khan Academy kept coming up and I had no idea what it was, but I do now. So Khan Academy saved my life, saved my MCAT life. And once I found it, it was the perfect tool for content review. Because I was a few years out of undergrad, a lot of that information, those foundational sciences and chemistries, they were not fresh in my mind. And I needed some tool to get me all of the content, but that was all in one place, so I didn't have to go hunting for it. Khan Academy was the perfect resource that had everything I needed in one place, very organized and sectioned, and had practice questions, and it was just perfect. It was perfect. So I'll show you guys what I did. Basically, what I made was a document that had every single Khan Academy video online. So I listed each video under each section with titles. And then I basically worked out over the five months how many videos I would do each day in order to finish all of Khan Academy by a few months into that dedicated study period so that I had seen all the content well before my test date. So that was my content review. I also took extensive notes when I was reviewing. So as I was watching the Khan Academy video, I would have a notebook and write out things that I needed to remember. So finding whatever resource, for me it was Khan Academy, to do your content review, taking extensive notes that you can refer back to is key. So over my dedicated study period, I worked at a full-time pace. So I treated the MCAT like it was my job. So I would work from nine to five and I would wake up at about eight, have breakfast, go to the library, start at nine o'clock. I would take lunch at 12, get back to it, end the day at five. So be careful not to burn yourself out. Many of you may be juggling a job, be juggling other classes. So whatever pace you can work at that gets 
all of the material covered and gets you in a place where you feel confident about your knowledge and your test taking, do that. So the last strategy that I included in my study plan was to take practice tests. Practice tests, practice tests, practice tests. Practice makes perfect. They say that for a reason. Starting at about February, so about a month in of content review, I started taking practice tests. What I would do was I would go to my local library bright early in the morning, so 8 a.m., basically simulating testing conditions. So I would go up to a private room, set up my computer, and basically work as if I was taking the test on that day. So I did that about every Saturday for about a month or two. So I took about five to six practice tests during that time. Sometimes I'd space them out, but always on Saturdays because that was my test day and I would start at 8 a.m. on the dot. So for practice tests, I use both exam crackers and the AAMC MCAT practice exams. I recommend both, honestly, from my experience, no matter which resource you use, because Kaplan, Princeton Review, there are many different types of companies that have practice exams. Whichever you decide to use, just use them. That's all I have to say. Just use them. Take practice tests. Take as many as you can because there is no better way to gauge your understanding of the material and more importantly, how you can apply that knowledge to questions without practicing. Like me, the first time I knew the information, I'd seen it all in my classes before, but I had no idea how to apply the knowledge that I have to answer a question. So I just didn't get any questions right because there's a difference between knowing things and being able to answer things. So practice tests and doing questions, question banks, are the key to determining what knowledge you are actually able to apply. And obviously taking practice tests will give you a score. So you can see where you're scoring and see and be realistic with yourself if you're scoring where you need to be, if you're improving more importantly, and toward the end to see if you're scoring in a range that's acceptable for you and what you want to do and where you wanna to go to medical school. So overall, those are my key three things that I did in my study plan that was different than the first time around. So I took the Princeton Review course, which gave me a lot of tips and strategies in order to be a better test taker. I used Khan Academy to save my life, essentially, and give me all of the content review of every single topic that I needed to know for the test. Lastly, I took practice tests not only to determine if my knowledge was sufficient enough to answer questions, but also to see how I was performing, and more importantly, if my score was improving over time in order to get into a range that was sufficient for me to get accepted into medical school. So how did I do? Let's see. Same thing as the first time. I go to my AAMC account, I log in. This time there were two scores in there to check, so I had to pick the most recent one and I checked my score. So overall, I scored a 509 on my second MCAT attempt, which correlates to a 77th percentile score. You can see the breakdown for each category with psych, social, and the biological foundations of behavior being my highest category percentile. Honestly, the psych and social section saved me and gave me the score that I got because the other categories, while I did okay, 60s, 70s percentile, that 90 something percentile for psych and social definitely dragged my score up. So in my next video, in part three, I'm going to give overall MCAT tips in general, things that also I wish I had done even the second time around. And that is something that I would recommend. Psych and Soch, it's very straightforward. And it's something that honestly, if you read a book, one of the Kaplan or Princeton Review books, it's something that you can definitely max out that section on and help bring your score up. So there you have it. I got a 509, which was a 77th percentile my second time around, which was 62 percentile higher than my first MCAT attempt, which was a 15th percentile. So I actually just found some old photos of the moment that I opened up my MCAT score. I FaceTimed my sister and let her know that I had scored so much higher than the first time around. So take a look. 
So while I know that a 509, a 77th percentile score is not 99th percentile, this was my real experience. And a 509 was good enough to get me accepted into 10 medical schools and on a full tuition scholarship. So it works out. Hard work pays off. This was my struggle. It was one that I didn't envision and it was very real. It was a struggle to start from the very beginning, to revamp my entire strategy and start the process over again. And I am very proud of my progress. And you should be too. No matter what score you get on the MCAT, just know that if you need to improve, it will happen. If you did well, good for you. And we're all going to make it at the end of the day. So be positive, be open-minded, and be willing to fail. Sometimes we need to fail in order to give us that little kickstart that we need to be more successful. So stay tuned for my next video, the final video in this three-part series, in which I'm going to give you just tips and strategies for the MCAT. This includes things that I not only mentioned in the last video as well as this video, but also things I know now that I wish I would have knew then, even on my second time around. There are many tips and strategies that I have, especially now that I am a medical student and work with the admissions department, that I want you guys to know when you're MCAT preparing. It will make your life easier, it will help you be more efficient, and it'll help you focus on what exactly you should be aiming for in order to best maximize your chances to get into medical school. So that's part three, stay tuned. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you're studying for the MCAT right now, Good luck to you. Keep grinding.